distract. There we go. But so, yeah. Was, what did you think of Secret Agent Dingledorf? How did you enjoy it? So I really enjoyed it. And I have a few questions related to your involvement in it, but also just the project in general. So let's set the groundwork here. You know, Secret Agent Dingledorf and this trusty dog splat is what we're talking about. Paul Johansson, you have a very interesting role in this. <laughs> we were just talking about James Bond and, and, and now uh, Agent 00.5, right? Yeah, were well, you going for more Roger Moore, <laughs> Daniel Craig, Pierce Brosnan, maybe? <laughs> I would be honored to even hit the Roger Moore vibe. Um, I think the take was um, Billy Dixon's the director, Bill Myers is the writer. And I think the take was going into the project was to have fun and don't hold back. And if I've gone too far, he'll let me know, but don't, don't edit myself, just go. Absolutely. <laughs> with, with, with what a gift, right? <laughs> and it definitely comes through. I mean, we'll talk about the bloopers a little bit, but oh, yeah. I, I was trying to count the number of times you kept saying, and I forgot my line because you were just having fun. <laughs> Yeah. I don't normally, I don't normally forget. I mean, I usually have had a lot of dialogue in my career and many, many of the different opportunities I've had. And I really believe in coming ultra prepared. But on this movie, you know, although I had obviously really studied my dialogue and stuff like that, I was given this opportunity to, to go off dialogue, to, to improv, to have fun and really push. And when you're doing that, it's kind of like your brain just goes, yeah, I forgot everything because I'm just going to have fun. And then you kind of, then you're, you know, so it actually was part of the process was to forget the dialogue and just go. That's great. You mentioned a little bit that it was a different approach uh, or, you know, a different approach in terms of how you prepared or what you were able to do, but how did you become, in, become involved in the project to begin with? Well, Billy Dixon is, uh, was a longtime director and director of photography on a series I did starting in 2003 called One Tree Hill. And I can't remember how many seasons he did, but I think about half the series. And then he went off and did other things and um, him and I stayed close. And he is a very, um, well, I did another series for him. He did his, another series that he created on his own called IQ 145. I hope it's 145. <laughs> <laughs> it must be 144 for me. But um, he uh, did, we all, we did the whole series on green screen. So we went into this big warehouse and green screened everywhere and did the whole series. So I had worked with Billy before and him and I have a great uh, standing relationship working together. Very good. One of the things with the movie that I really enjoyed, you know, it's, it's definitely a family friendly kids movie and it is focused on, you know, self-esteem and uh, really, I guess, reinforcing the individual. What, it's, it's rather accessible compared to a lot of other big projects that we see hitting theaters or even VOD or anything like that. Do you, do you think that kids films like this are important to get out there and ones where they are more family friendly and uh, I guess palatable for the entire family? Well, I, I do, but I also kind of feel like um, this particular project felt a little bit like it had a tinge of like an older world, like 20, 30 years ago when things were more naive, when things were easier, when life was simpler. Although there's technology in there and there's, there's uh, cell socks, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's no phones you know it still has that sort of like old-fashioned vibe to it which kind of I thought was really kind of just quaint and charming to be a part of so I, I think that was really good plus I have a 10 year old boy um, who is a fan of Bill Myers loves his books and every time he meets Bill Myers, he goes, I have another great idea for a title. And he throws title ideas at Bill, who goes, that's very interesting. I don't know how I can work squid into that, but that's good. <laughs> um, so my son is a huge fan. So I, I think my wanting to be involved in my involvement, part of it was, yes, obviously, I want to do movies that my son can watch. <laughs> um, being 10 and very sweet, very intelligent, but also, you know, innocent. And I don't want to steal that from him. So this movie does didn't, in fact, he's, loved it and he particularly like you I think I'm, I think where you're going he loved the last five minute blooper reel <laughs> really he sat there and he was like you know holding his stomach laughing he thought that stuff was great it, 
It was really great. And one of the things that that really highlighted as well was your relationship with the young actors. And yeah, exactly. yeah, then... <laughs> yeah definitely with, with Zachary and seeing, you know, the back and forth, you say to him at one point, like, this is, this is the best your career is going to be or something like that, joking around. And of course, he's starting to take off a little bit with some of the in, uh, projects he's involved in. But as a veteran actor and having been involved in so many different series and uh, movies, do you find yourself mentoring young actors in uh, pro or projects like this or? Well, I, I'd be, I'm very, very careful. Number one is I really find that one, it's the director's job on, on the movie to provide guidance. The best way for me to be a father, which is the same as I feel like if I'm, if I'm working with younger actors is to um, lead by example and not by words. And so I, I would never, tell him or I would, or or sort of like you know unless he asked for something I wouldn't I certainly wouldn't offer it without you know uh stepping with the director first because I think there's a there is a respect that um is the director's and he may have other ideas but I would say that you know I remember watching <laughs> well I loved it. what I loved about Zachary and the other actors is they're actually very quick like they, they're quick on the improv quick on the uptake and I remember watching Downey, who's an old friend of mine. I did a movie called Soap Dish with Robert Downey back in like 19, I remember, 1991, I think. One of my first films. And, and we became quite good friends. And I watched him do, uh, in Iron Man, I think it was Iron Man 2, maybe it was Iron Man 1, I don't know. He, he has that little, um, he has to rebuild his iron suit in the, in, the, in, the, in the barn with this young kid that he meets. And the relationship between them was very sort of like, it was dry, you know? It's like, you know, and, and I just, <laughs> I just loved that vibe. And that was what I was trying to, to, to kind of go for with Zach in a way was because after I saw that with Robert, I thought, you know, he's not treating him like a kid. He's treating him like kind of like an adult. And it's way more fun in the interaction level for us. So that's what I was kind of going for. Does that make sense? It definitely makes sense. And I think that comes across as well. I mean, it, it, it has to be important to build a rapport with any actor, but especially with a child actor to allow them to sort of have that range and that flexibility in their performances. And again, that comes across in the bloopers, even with their own individual bloopers, right? They're, they're having fun. They, they know when they messed up a line. And I think I kept hearing them say, uh, run it again or something like that. And it's so funny hearing a young actor say that, run it again. <laughs> right. Right. I'm getting to see the books. Right. Yeah. I, I love when a young actors do take their power. And I think that all of those actors did. I think Zachary is going to be a very special actor. And uh, I loved I loved watching him grow and him and I've stayed in touch. It's really nice. That's great. That's very good. Um, or, so they kind of leave the film open a little bit at the end in terms of wanting to continue the series. And I love that you talked about wanting to be involved um, also to sort of bring that to life for your son. Do you see yourself staying involved with the series? Should it continue? I would. I would certainly be open to anything that they would come up with. I mean, I would. Even, I even think that my son, who's ten now and just finished doing a movie, mm. would probably want to be involved. Mm. He loves. He loves Bill Meyer. He loves the, the books and and Billy Dixon's so easy to work with. So yeah, I, I hope that I. You know, I could even see it being turned into a series. You know. Yeah, I could definitely see that. That's, and there's a lot of source material to go from. So absolutely. It was a lot of fun to watch and you can tell everyone's having fun in there. It's really good messaging and just clean humor uh, and a really good story. So I, I definitely commend you for that because it, it is, a, I think, a departure from other projects that I've seen you in, but you can tell that even you're having a blast doing it. I, I've always been pegged as the bad guy. It's nice to at least be, you know, able to uh, put on the white hat once in a while. So Paul, you mentioned the bad guy. I have to bring it up. Okay. Um, you know, I, I read somewhere that you once were attacked by someone with a purse because of your role as Dan in One Tree Hill. I was getting, I can't remember if I was getting in or out of a taxi in New York City. And um, this lady looked at me and then kind of did a double take and then swung a, a purse, which apparently had like several rolls of nickels in it, which I didn't understand. I'm just guessing because that's how hard it was. And it knocked me down. And she said, she stood over me and she said, I, I can't believe what you're doing to that boy. He's a good boy. Lucas is a good boy. And I went, Lucas? And I rung in my head, oh, she thinks I'm really Dan Scott. It was one of the most sort of sobering moments in my career going, 
there's a real, <laughs> like, people really love and buy into wholeheartedly sometimes these characters that we create. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it I was uh, share that my mother was a big fan of One Tree Hill and I <laughs> watch it with her here and there. Um, and I think just like just about everyone uh, was on the same page with not really loving your character, but what? recognizing that, you know, you did such a great job at bringing that character to life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's to this day, my mom, if she sees you in a project or when I was telling her that we were going to chat today, she said, oh, I don't know about him. <laughs> and I have to remind her it's the character, not the actor. <laughs> Did she see the series but, to the very end? What's that? Did she see the series to the very end? Two thousand. So in the end, when I save my son's life, and I and and I, you know, and I and I get redemption from all the people I love through through my attempt to reconcile. There's a beautiful, long, and well earned delayed gratification there for audience members that have, have have hated Dan for so long to see, you know, that he's he's changed, you know. And I love that they gave me that opportunity as an actor, you know. Yeah, it's really nice to see that redemption arc play out on screen, especially, you know, and I, I said it before, but I'll say it again, for a character to be that viscerally felt, uh, you know, and the the things that Dan did for you to bring that to life and have it be so palpable, I, I think it's just a testament to what you do as an actor. So, I mean, congratulations on such a great series with that too. And then all the projects that have come since. There's been talk of a potential reboot. Obviously, Dan probably won't be involved. <laughs> I can't imagine that they could bring him back. He's 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 long gone now. He's worms food. Yeah, right. Do you think that's a project that you would like to see brought back or revisited? Um, if they can be creative with uh, with the storytelling, and it would be interesting to see them do a a post log or a prologue. Either one would be interesting to see. Go back to the eighties and and hire some young actors to play Dan, Karen, and Deb, and when they were in high school, and see how that goes. You know, be kind of cool, and then. Or maybe shoot off into uh, into 2021 or 2022, and and I mean you're going to be you're going to be starting the whole thing over again. But I don't know. Sometimes stories are best left finished. Yeah, you know, I agree. It's hard to uh, to imagine some stories being remade. We're in such a time of reboots and remakes. Uh, I feel like it might only be a matter of time before we see some iteration of One Tree Hill again. But I mean, I don't. I hope. I hope that if they do, that they uh, they really take chances. You know what I mean? Just, I agree just, with that. Yeah. Paul, where, where can we see you next? Uh, I've got a movie coming. I just did a movie for three months. I was in uh, Mexico with Nick Cassavetes, the director of The Notebook, and John Q, Alpha Dog, great director, my sister's keeper, uh, the other woman he directed and wrote those. And uh, he just directed me in a movie called God is a Bullet. It um, is not a kid's movie. It is a very, very dark tale of an L.A. cop whose wife and daughter um, were um, murdered and taken by uh, uh, an LA cult in the 80s and 90s. I, I think that it's based on a true story, and then it's uh, it's it's you know it's in post production now. So next year it'll be released, and it's a, a very bad guy rule. <laughs> I'm another bad guy. Yeah. Uh, the, well, and switching back and forth that has to be a little challenging. Now from a, a positive, fun character like in Dingledorf to once again, being the bad guy. Right, right, right. Well, you know, um, there'll be Dingledorf to balance it off in the theaters. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Paul, thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's early out there, but uh, it was great chatting with you and I look forward to the new projects. Me too. Hope we get to talk again. Absolutely. Thanks so much.